This screencast is based on Module 4, Lesson 10, where we continue to compare lines and patterns generated by addition rules and multiplication rules. Again, this is based upon the problem set, but it very closely parallels what you'll see in your homework. Let's get started with number 1. It says use the coordinate plane below to complete the following tasks. We have a line P where X and Y are equal, so X equals Y. It tells us to construct a line D that is parallel to line P and contains point D. I want to point something out here. If we look at this line P, if we look at where it intersects, it intersects each one of these grid points here. And if we go up one, we go across one, up two, across two. So we need something that is going to go at the same rate here. So uh, it may be a little confusing, but I want something that again intersects the corners of each one of these individual grids here to be parallel. So let's put in the line. Okay, now that we've created that line, we need to name three coordinate pairs on D. I'm going to start with the uh, point that intersects that Y axis, and I see that I have a 0, comma 2, I can find another point here. Let's look at uh, where we have uh, x of 1, we have y of 3. And we'll go up to here where we have an x of 4, we have a y of 6. So let's look at those uh, pairs. What can we do? Well, I could add 2 to 0 and I'd get 2. Um, and let's see if that holds out through the other points. If I take a 1 and add 2 to that, I get 3. And if I take 4 and I add 2 to that, I get 6. So that's a rule. I could say, uh, I like to use the uh, mathematical expressions. You can use words as well. I would just say that y equals x plus 2. Now we need to construct a second line. A line E that is parallel P, a uh, line P, and contains point E. Again, we need it to go through the corners of each one of these grid lines here because that's what we're doing here for P if we want to make it parallel. So we'll create another line. Now that we have our line created, we're going to name three points. So I'm going to go where it intersects the x-axis this time. So if I have a value of x, whoop, let's uh, get the right tool here. If I have the value of x is 1, y is 0. Uh, let's look at another one. Let's look at 3. If my x is 3, my y is 2. And if my x is 6, my y is 5. So what's the rule there? Well, if I take 1 and I subtract 1, I get 0. 3, subtract 1, and I get 2. 6, I subtract 1, I get 5. So the rule would be y equals x minus 1. Now part 1h asks us to compare and contrast the lines d and e in terms of their relationship with line p. Well, they're both parallel to line p. That's uh, one thing. And I notice that when we have uh, y, uh, x and y are equal, we have line p. When I added 2x to find y, I ended up above the p, yet parallel. And when I subtracted, I ended up below line p. And number two, which again relates to the same graph and chart here, it says write a fourth rule that would be parallel to those above and would contain the points three and a half, six. Well, I know that if I add or subtract from x to find y, I end up with a line that's parallel to line uh, to y. And that's why I know. So what can I do? I can figure out, well, if my x is 3 and a half, I need to do what to get 6 and a half? Or 6, rather, excuse me. 6, well, I have to increase that by 2 and a half. So it would be y equals x plus 2 and 1 half. And if I graph that, it would be parallel to all the lines, 
D, P, and E, and it would be somewhat above line D because we're adding two and a half rather than two. Uh, for number three, we have again uh, line P to start with, where X and Y are equal. It says construct a line V uh, that contains the origin and the point V. Now we're not going to be parallel this time, so let's uh, draw that line in going through the origin and point V. Now we must identify or name three points on uh, for, uh, line V. So we can do that by just taking a look at that line and finding where it intersects various points. So for example, when I have a 3, I have a 6. So I could say 3 and 6. And when I have a 5, I have a 10. 5 and 10. And we can go one more 6 and 12. 6 and 12. So what's the rule here? Well, I could add 3 to, to 3 to get 6, but that won't work with the next one. Uh, I can't add 3 to 5 and get 10, so we're going to have to try a multiplication rule. So 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 5 is 10. And 6 times 2 is 12. So what can we do? We can identify that rule as y equals 2x, or y equals 2 times x, or y equals twice x, of uh, various ways to do that. Let's now construct another line. It says construct line w that contains the origin and the point w. Okay, let's put in that line. Now let's name some points on line w. If I have a 10, I have 5. If I have a 4, I have a 2, or y. And if I have 12, my y is 6. So what's my rule here? Well, I could try subtraction. 10 minus 5 is 5, but 4 minus 5 is not 2. So again, we'll have to try uh, division, or I could use a multiplication rule. I'm going to use a multiplication rule uh, because we know that if we multiply by a fraction, we're doing the same as division. So my rule would be uh, 10 divided by 2 is 5, but that's the same as y equals 1 half times x. So let's now compare and contrast lines v and w in terms of the relationship with p. All three intersect at the origin. I noticed that when I multiplied by a number greater than 2, I have a steeper line than the original line p or greater than 1, rather, I have a steeper line than the original line P, where I'm multiplying by 1. And when I have, uh, when I multiply by a factor less than 1, I get a line that's not as steep as P, where once again, we're essentially, if X equals Y, uh, Y equals 1X. So the other thing we can notice is the greater the factor, the steeper the angle. In uh, the question I here, I, I've really kind of covered that already. It's, uh, the greater the factor, the steeper the line is going to be. Again, we're going to get a perfectly uh, uh, diagonal 45 degree line if we multiply our factor x by 1. If we're greater than 1, we're going to get a line that is steeper than 45 degrees. And if we multiply by factor less than 1, we get a line that's not as steep as uh, the uh, line P, where uh, y equals 1x. For the final part, 4, it says circle the rules that generate lines that are parallel to each other. Well, where were the lines parallel? The lines are parallel when our operations were either addition or subtraction. So when we multiplied and divided, uh, we ended up with lines that started at the origin but were not parallel. So we need to look for the two rules that involve either multiplying, or I mean uh, adding or subtracting. So we have one here, add 5 to x, yep, that's addition. Multiply x by 2 thirds, nope, multiplication. x plus 1 half, that's addition once again. And x times 1 and a half, again, multiplication, uh, that does not result in parallel lines.